Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome to Let's Play The Sexy Brutal. Uh, this is a, a kind of puzzly detective game with time loops inspired by Groundhog's Day and uh, Majora's Mask. Came out less than a year ago. It was a collaboration between Tequila Works, makers of Deadlight and Rhyme, and Cavalier made up of X Lionhead developers. Uh, this game just oozes style. I love its aesthetic. I love its music. Uh, and I love the way it plays. I'm really happy to be doing this one. And it, of course, takes place in the eponymous Sexy Portal Casino. Every year, the Marquis throws an extravagant masked ball for select party members. His impeccably trained staff cater to their every desire, but this year something is terribly wrong. The guests aren't getting what they want at all. But you can find out. Uh, you can find that out for yourself. Lafcadio Boone. After all, you have all the time in the world. Lafcadio Boone. <laughs> ah. Now, thick black rain and mysterious woman with literally flowing black and red hair. It's oozing like liquid. And she's put some kind of mask on Lafcadio Boone's face. And advised us to never take it off. She will help us. We're not weak, but he, he is so, so strong. And the first, uh, the first level here is going to serve as a very linear tutorial. Uh, very linear in comparison to the rest of the game where things get tangled and uh, somewhat complicated. So here we're going to uh, check out most of our ways of interacting with the world around us. Which is to say moving around the rooms, opening doors up, uh, going into adjacent rooms, exploring the casino mansion, the sexy hotel that we're in, and spying through keyholes. Observing behavior. This is Sir Reginald Sixpence. Calm down, Reggie. They won't look for you here. Probably. So once you find a guest, you probably want to trail him and just, just see what's going on. Besides, the fire at the north uh, door means that we can't pass through it yet. Uh, here we can listen in, we can hear their footsteps and see where they're going, the other guests, and other actions that might be taking place. So we're going to walk to this other door that we heard him go through and, again, spy through the keyhole to see him rifling through a safe. And out pops some kind of shell or cartridge. It's filled with nothing but garbage. He goes through that left-hand door. And now he's in the chapel. Lucas, what have you done? Um, we can't quite see who just entered the room, but we can hear a gun cocking. You don't know what's going to happen. Ah, now there I must correct you, sir. I know exactly what's going to happen. What will happen is I'm going to shoot you messily in the chest. And then have a bastard of a time getting the stain out of the woodwork. And then we skip backwards in time just a little bit. To one room that we did not spy into. A room with a, uh, with a dresser in it and a rifle on a gun rack on the wall. I 
I love that little detail of him uh, blessing himself before he closing the doors, praying not to be seen. So the so the rifle was uh, secured tightly to the wall, but he just rips it away. There's always plan B if shooting Reginald doesn't work, which we just observed it very much did. So now we're going to see what just happened from a different perspective, just a little bit back in time. So this game is all about time loops, and using those time loops to observe the behavior of the guests and the servants, and then from there to devise a plan to stop whatever is happening. It's about investigating the mansion and figuring out what happened to the guests and then working backwards from there to save them from the shadows, mind you, by figuring out how to disrupt the servants' plans. So for this first part, we have all the information we need, but we're learning of one new mechanic, uh, which is this brief window of time we get when a servant or another guest is in the same room as us. We won't be chased immediately, but their mask will eventually come off uh, and chase us down. And if we're caught, we reset to the beginning of the day. So we can't occupy the same room as a guest or a servant at the same time. Uh, but they, if they come into the room with us, we do have a brief window to escape. And this is all because of the gift that this woman gave us when she, uh, when she touched the mask. The staff are murderers, the guests are victims, but they're controlled, dominated by the masks they wear. And she has one more gift for us. A pocket watch. Took it from the man you saw murdered. Reginald Sixpence. If you can return it to Sixpence, he'll be able to unlock its full potential. Right now, it's broken. Uh, so that means that at 5 p.m. it will reset to the beginning of the day at uh, afternoon on Saturday. Use a pack of watch to restart the day from 12 p.m. It's partially smashed, resets at 5. Yeah, you need to find Reginald and save him from getting shot by that servant. Oh yeah, mask powers, invitations, cards, and of course all the guests we have to save in the mansion. And the map, uh, which is very limited to just a, a handful of rooms for this first tutorial mission. Oh, I love the graphic for the pocket watch. This whole game's aesthetic is wonderful. We can also check the map. Uh, and there's a very cool detail about the map that we will need to utilize uh, throughout the game. First, we're going to spy. Uh, the map is... Like I said, cut off from us for a bit. Uh, we're limited to a couple of rooms. Time Scrubber, the movement of characters you have seen will be added to the map. So not only will we be able to see uh, the layouts of the rooms and the key items that we've come across in the rooms, once we observe a guest's behavior or a servant's behavior, like if I am in this room and I notice that Reginald comes in at uh, it's 1 or 2 p.m., rifling through the safe, that's always going to show up on the map when I scrub through time when looking at the map. Uh, like right here, we know that Reginald gets shot in the chapel at 4 p.m. So he is highlighted in red on the stopwatch at 4. And it's now 1 p.m., so he's entered this room to look through the safe that we saw before. Grayson, you reprobate. Ah, bingo. And there's that shell or that cartridge, whatever that was. We'll investigate that once Reginald leaves the room through that north door. And now, instead of going through the routine we went through the first time when we were just observing things, we'll come in and pick this up and find out that it is a blank cartridge. And now, because we observed everyone's behavior before, we know the servant isn't going to be here. And we know Reginald went to the chapel. 
Uh, so we can come to this room that had the rifle. And we have time to insert the blank cartridge into the gun. To stop the servant from shooting Reginald. And that's really the solution here. We can't take the rifle away because it's securely mounted to the wall. And we aren't strong enough to rip it off like the servant. But look how things play out now. Starts off the same, but as the servant goes to shoot Reginald Sixpence... Nothing. And he realizes there's a blank, but remember he said something about Plan B. But before he can enact Plan B, <laughs> he throws some kind of uh, candelabra at him. Golden Duck, cracking job. This feels very different. Why am I wearing this mask still? And the main theme kicks in. It's so swingy and good. Also notice this slight rumble that plays. Uh, that affects this room. You get a little bit of dust falling in. We'll explore that later. Now that we've saved Reginald, we can finally reveal ourselves. Is that my pocket watch? I have a strange... I have the strangest feeling I've been looking all over for this. We've done quite the number on it. So now Reginald will fix the pocket watch for us and give us full access to the day. Yeah, so it's a big murder mystery <laughs> time loop game. Like a puzzling Metroidvania. Uh, and the Metroidvania elements are very much about to come into play. You can use the pocket watch on any ticking clock. This will save your game and set that clock as your respawn point. So we'll, uh, uh, we'll come up to uh, big grandfather clocks throughout the mansion. And we can set those to respawn at the start of the day once we use the pocket watch. We've saved our first guest. And over there where it says mask powers, uh, we're about to pick up Reginald's mask and get a new ability from it. That's where the Metroidvania elements come in, because each guest that we save will bestow upon us a mask with its own unique set of powers that will unlock more and more of the mansion. Reginald's Clock Mastery. With Sixpence's mask, you can now create a bomb with the clocks around the house. Use any active clock in the mansion to jump to 4 p.m. or 8 p.m. So we don't have to do quite as much waiting around if we know a particular event that we're waiting for happens around those times. Now we have to go quickly. Even now, the mansion is straining to undo what we've done. Look for you by the clock, in the casino. We're back to afternoon on Saturday. And this time we start off in a new location. The Marquee again invites us to tonight's show, 7 p.m. in the theater. We'll have to wait for that other servant up there to pass by and look at that that is a beautiful elegant font now we can get up and use this clock in the grand lobby and ballroom so we are now locked to this clock once we reset time that's gonna do it for now uh like comment subscribe and do all that good stuff there's some kind of bell now i don't know thank you all for watching <laughs>
<laughs> Take it easy. Have a good one.